Targeting and cutting uh, are essential to, to any sword technique. It's, uh, it's, as we discussed, it's not only important that you know how to cut and where to cut, but the essentials of cutting and the uh, physics and dynamics of the cutting are not all that difficult once they're understood. And what I'd like to do right now is just go through some of the, the basic uh, strategies of, and physics of cutting so that you can understand how to align your body, how to extend the sword, and how to create different cuts uh, at different levels on the, the wara. This was a uh, soaked tatami. Normally we'd soak this in a, uh, obviously this is a dry tatami we're using for demonstration, but if I were to be doing actual cutting, I would be soaking this in a container overnight, uh, maybe 12 hours, up to 24 hours, uh, and give it a little bit tougher consistency. That way uh, pieces don't go flying all over the floor. A wet tatami uh, has a tendency to stay together a little better, and it does not scratch the blade, whereas a dry tatami, such as this, as the sword passes through it, although it doesn't cut any more difficult, it will scratch the blade and it's uh, very messy to, to clean up afterwards. I'd li first like to talk about the swing of the sword itself, so I'm going to step back and maybe you can uh, check my alignment as I move. I'm going to talk about extension and alignment, not only with the sword, but as the sword and my body is aligned to the target. Normally, we always start off teaching new people how to cut lined feet together directly in, in line with the target from a jodan position. So we're going to practice all of our cuts from a jodan position, jodan being above the head. Notice that at this point, my body is in straight alignment with the target. But as I cut, if I cut from here in this position, the sword is still moving forward when it touches the target. In actuality, a sword never really starts to cut until it passes the center line of the body or the furthest extension from the body. So it's important that I align myself so that the initial action of touching the target is in line with the center line is being crossed by the sword. So what I do is as I start my cut, I move my center line to the right. If I'm cutting from right to left, my left foot back, I cut outward and down so that now as I touch the target, it's already, the sword is already traveling backward and down tor toward me. Rather than, at this point, it's still moving forward and pushing the target. But in this position, it's pulling toward me as I perform the cut. If I cut from left to right, the opposite is true. I step off and line the target up with my left hip or just off my center line. Extension out, cutting, and now the sword is coming back to me as it starts to cut. Most people have no problem performing a first cut because it's high and the extension, the full extension, is directly out from my shoulders. Notice how much sword, how much of the sword is left as I perform this cut in alignment to this side of the target. Once I start my cut, full extension, my furthest extension is when my hand is straight out from my shoulder. This is furthest extension. This is where I finally start to make a good extension on the target. In this case, I want to have the monouchi, or the last nine inches, being the initial cutting part of the target. This is easy to do, but what happens for most people is the further down the target they, be, they get, the less sword they have to work with. So it's not only essential that you know where to cut, but you have to align and move closer to the target with each successive cut downward. So as I cut in with the first one, I'm using the monouchi. As I cut in with the second one, I have to move slightly forward to have more sword so that I can use the monouchi again. The same goes for the next cut. I want to maintain cutting surface of the monouchi with each successive cut. And this goes all the way through the target. The other possibility, and uh, sometimes you'll be doing this when you're doing kumitachi or working with another partner, you not only have to, you can lower the sword by moving forward or you can lower the sword by lowering your body. This also gives you the most extension on the sword as you cut. The other cut we're going to talk about, more difficult cut, is a yokuuchi manji or suihei. This is a very flat cut. And we usually practice this from a position, a stance, the feet are spread, the arms are straight out from the target, the target is just off my center line. So that as the sword passes, we're already cutting. Try not to swing the sword from the side. We, this is actually pushing the sword. And as I turn my body, I want to turn my entire body with the sword 
extend and allow it to cut. That way, as my sword then passes the center line of my body, it's slicing. The next cut is a kiriyage, or a rising cut. On a kiriyage, it's essential that the sword continues to move forward through the cut. So I don't want to just come up and pull the sword back. Let me see if I can pull for you. If I pull the sword back toward me, the cut stops. In kiriyage, the kisaki has to move forward to its final position as far away from the swordsman as possible. As soon as the hip retracts, the cut will stop. So if you use these basic principles in cutting, I think you'll find that uh, your cutting will improve, your targeting will improve, and you'll have much better cuts and less chance of bending your sword. Now that you've learned basic targeting, basic physics of cutting, we're going to go on to cover the cutting technique itself on a target or a wrapped wara. Make sure that as you're cutting, you leave enough target area on the mat to complete your, your next cut. On this cut, we're going to do two level cutting. This is a, your beginning cuts for the uh, beginning level, level student. These are both kesa cuts. You're going to do a right and left kesa cut. In other words, as we step toward the target, we're going to cut left to right and right to left. Or as you may see Shimabukuro Sensei demonstrate, left to right, then right to left. So please uh, pay attention. Remember to try and keep your cuts as close to a 45 degree angle as possible. Uh, that's normally what's used in competition cutting. Uh, however, in real combat, the angles will change according to your target areas on a body. But for the mat area, in order to leave more mat for yourself, the 45 degree angle works the best.